This week on Scottish Van Trips, we're going to be doing a handover of the VW T6.1. If you've not got a VW T6.1 yet and you're thinking about getting one, this is basically the handover video that uh, when you go to the garage, someone will walk around the van and show you how everything works. That's what I'm going to do just now so you get a little sneak preview before you even pick up your van. What I'm going to do is put timestamps below so you can just click on the bit that you need to see. That'll show you how everything in the van works. Let's check it out. So not all VWs are the same but most of them have something very similar to this. Over here, this is the heater operation. So basically the heater control panel has uh, a bunch of controls here that you really don't honestly need. Um, essentially, to get your heating working, press the square button in the bottom if it's the same setup as this one, and it'll get starting. You can hear the fan coming on now. And you can see here, it's got heating by the temperature panel here. There's a little temperature gauge on the top right. And it's telling me that in the van at the moment it's 15 degrees and I've got it set to 17. Oh, let's just drop to 14. You can essentially up, increase the temperature and decrease the temperature with these left and right arrows. I know it's a bit counterintuitive. It took me a bit of getting used to it. I always wanted to use this one. And then you can hit the square button to stop it and shut it down again. It really is as easy as that. If you need anything more than that, there are much better YouTube videos online going into detail on that. Over here on the Sergeant Control Panel, we've got the power on and off, the lights on and off. We've got the leisure battery and the vehicle battery. In this particular model, the vehicle battery isn't connected just in case we accidentally left it on and ran the vehicle battery dry. It's not good for the vehicle battery, so that isn't connected at the moment. And this is just a pump for the tap, so you can switch the tap on and get you can get water pumped through it. Over here, you've got USBs, and they are everywhere throughout the van, and there's a 12 volt socket here. One of the cool things I like for my camper van is I've got a 12 volt laptop charger and I go all over the country in the van and uh, plug my laptop in there and it gives me the ability to work from the van keeping the laptop fully charged. Your three pin plugs, these will only work when you're connected onto a campsite or onto a power source. There's two ways to connect onto your power source there. You can um, plug your van in via an electrical hookup point that you get on campsites. I'll stick an image on the screen just now, but essentially uh, these three pin plugs all over the van will only work if you've got the electrical hookup on. Um, you can also get a fitting on the end of your electrical hookup cable with a three pin plug on it. So if you're at home, you can just plug it into your outside socket in the garage or wherever it is. Or if you're staying with friends, you can uh, plug ask to plug it into their um, e external plug socket and that gives you power in the van. Over to the next thing. This is the sergeant control panel, um, and over here, this is the on and off switch for that. So if you've got any power problems and you are plugged in, it's more than likely going to be the fact that this isn't switched on and the red light should be on here. Um, these are your RCDs, so your safety um, the residual current devices, just like in your house. So if you've got a blown... Uh, uh, fuse there one of these switches will be facing down at the moment as you can probably just about see they're all in the oops they're all oh, bloody hell they're all in the up position they're all in the up position and that's where they should be so this one is for the fridge the sockets and the hob and that's the general rcd over here we've got the fuse box with all the generic uh, vehicle fuses that you can buy online and these are all marked up here with chargers, sockets, lights, fans and all the rest of it, fridge and so on. So any problems you can check those as well. Down here, under the sergeant control panel, we've got access to the gas valve there, which operates the uh, hob 
and the grill and there is also uh, access to the water uh, container down there so the pump is all built in that's the main filler pipe coming in I'm sorry the lighting's not great but that's the main filler coming in from outside the van and that is the the actual uh, water container there every uh, year we put a puri tab in there and give it a good thorough wash out just to make sure it's sterile and clean but we never drink the water out of there anyway we were told by the manufacturer not to drink it out of there and we haven't done this is maybe a bit too simple but to operate these buttons you just push them in and lift them up and they just lock into position to operate the stove obviously it goes without saying to make sure you lift up the glass panel these are not heat proof if you leave this down with the stove on or too hot or you put a hot pan on the top it will shatter so don't do it i tend to lift up both when i'm cooking just to make sure that one's far enough away from the heat source as well but just like an old-fashioned cooker you push down the the button here to get the gas on depending on which hob that you want to switch on and then it's a simple ignition switch and then you slowly release and as you can see you've got your gas on there over here in the sink the tap just lifts up and you've got water there as you need it as long as the pump switch is on which if you remember is this one here don't forget when you're cooking that you need to have a window open there's a little safety catch here on the on the window you just pull it down and that opens up and locks to wherever you want it to be it's quite stiff on my van might be the same on yours um, so it's a bit of an effort to do it just be careful you don't catch the curtains when you're doing it on that note transport it to our HQ curtains which are on double curtain rails sometimes if you lean on them or something they can come loose uh, there's a trick to getting them back on the rail you basically put it in sideways facing the way it should be and twist it into position so you put it into the rail sideways and twist it and that gets it back on the one the one I'd be really careful about is behind here because behind the sink I accidentally went on this curtain rail one day and it popped out at the top there and it took me about three hours to get that one back on so just be super careful with the ones behind the sink also on that if you wanted to we tend not to use them but there are little curtain ties tie backs that you can just use they are uh, press studded nice and simple to use and it keeps your curtains pulled back makes it look nice the table fits into the door card there there's a couple of clips underneath which I'll just show you here I'm not sure you can see that sorry it's a bit dark they just undo and slide along I'll find somewhere I can put this camera and the table just unclips and then I usually just turn it upside down undo this nut that folds down press in the, the little catch there you can see there's a wide gap at the top here and a smaller gap at the bottom while the small gap goes up the way when it goes on the door so it faces this way to get it into the door card you just simply slide it into the little clips at the bottom and then firmly give it a tap and put it in like that it's a bit tricky it'll take you a few times to get used to it just make sure it's not sticking out or it will catch on the vehicle as you open the door so it's really important to make sure that's pushed in all the way to fold out the bed there's a little nut down here simply undo the nut and pull out the bed making sure that you don't lose the seat belts because they will tend to have a tendency to run down and try and go under the seats so that's the bed out to put the bed back up again I put your hand into this bit here and lift and again just catch these clips to make sure they don't go away in the back one thing to be sure of do not put your hands into here into the framework I don't know if you can see this do not put your hands into this framework when you're pulling it out the way and the reason is quite simple because 
that gap closes and if you have your hand in there I've heard horror stories of people breaking every single one of their four fingers so don't do it swiveling the seats you just simply undo these screws now sometimes if someone's been sitting on the seat it can get a bit stuck so all you need to do is actually physically move the seat sit on it wriggle in it and then it will become loose again sometimes they just get a little bit stuck very rarely but it might happen the nuts at the bottom here that you can see can be adjusted so it doesn't come all the way out and sometimes they need a little bit of adjustment from time to time because they do move as you rotate them the little clips that you can see just zoom in a bit there's little eyelets you can see little holes in the framework where those come round and they just sit up like that that saves it going back down into the hole when you're moving the seat round and all you do is simply undo all four of these the two at the back here and the two at the front and the trick when you're moving your seat is to always have it moving towards the front left passenger corner of the van what I mean by that is you undo the four screws then you wriggle the seat forwards to that front corner diagonally so if you were sitting in the seat you'd be facing diagonally towards the front light of the van of the passenger side then you want to turn it round being careful that you're not catching the captain's chair the arm of the chair the driver's chair or the handbrake it's advisable to put it into first gear and take the handbrake off if it's safe to do so but just be careful where you're parked if you're on chocks or near a cliff or something like that I tend to leave the handbrake on I don't mind it bumping into it a little bit as long as it's not uh, too much and obviously it's in gear so if it does accidentally come off I'm not going to go crashing somewhere down a hill or off a cliff as the seat swivels you've got two options sometimes if you want a bit more room you can push it all the way to the back and you don't need to plug it twist it and uh, screw the screws back in um, if you want it back into position locked into position you're somewhere for a while you can screw them back in and it'll stay there for you when you're popping the top press the button on the metal clip pull the strap all the way down so it's got plenty room and make sure that you've got the door open to allow some air in otherwise you're going to create a vacuum and the top will not pop up it's really difficult to get the top up when you've got it um, when you've got all the doors closed when someone's sleeping up the top there are straps at either side front and rear to keep the canvas pulled in tight when you're closing it back down again now the ones at the front tend to be out of the way, but the ones at the back can be a bit of a pain. So just unclip them. They're little sort of rucksack clips that you get around your belt or around your chest when you're when your rucksack. Just unclip that, but remember to put it back together before you pull the top back down. The grill has a light on it, you can see there. And that operates exactly the same as the cooker. You would push that on there and the igniter button there at the same time just to ignite the gas. Another little trick about the oven, there is a pull-out baffle here, so you can use it as a warming oven. So that baffle pulls out, that clips on there, and all of a sudden you've got a little warming oven which is great for doing pies and sausage rolls, and I've seen videos where people have actually done chips and things like that. The fridge has got a lock on it so that it locks open when you're travelling, and that's obviously so that, uh, sorry, not when you're travelling, <laughs> so that it uh, locks open when you're not using it when it's not switched on and that just allows it to get air to keep it clean and fresh to just change that over it's just a simple catch it goes side to side like that so that's closed and you can see the door is now flush with the units to operate the fridge there's a little control panel in here you press and hold the on button And you can see all the lights come on and hopefully you can hear that kicking in at the moment I've got mine set to medium but there are options to take it down which operates the uh, ice box and you can get your ice in there and then if you press and hold for three seconds you've got a super frost button which just makes that really super cold 
Now bear in mind that the higher your fridge setting in terms of the colder it is, the more battery you're going to use. Um, I would say in the winter time the lowest setting is okay, it's not bad, you probably get away with it for most things, but actually the second or third one down is where you want it to get like what your house fridge would normally be. Um, on that setting, if you're not going crazy with the power, you can easily last three days out in the wild. So for the fridge, there is a little um, movable shelf in here, and you can see in that shelf there's a little clip, so if you've got something large, like bottles of milk or something, that actually opens up. I only discovered that uh, at a later date, so that's quite handy. Um, so if you've got anything that's kind of double height, that can go in there. Um, you've obviously got your salad drawer at the bottom, ice box in the top, there's a little kind of egg thing at the top there, and then there's a movable uh, divider there, which we use just to keep the kind of, um, I don't know what size they are, like a litre bottle of milk, not the small, small one, but the kind of medium one. On this particular van we've got two reading lights, there's one at the back here and one at the front. To operate them you just simply press the middle button and that has two strengths and then off as you can see. And they also have USB ports, bring that over here a bit, you can maybe just see that there's a USB port on this side and another one on the reverse side. The folding front seat, there's a safety lock on it there. Just make sure that's um, all the way tightened. It doesn't have to be super tight, it's just uh, it stops this lever being operated. And then when you're undoing it, just undo it a little bit until the lever can be pushed all the way down like that. To fold the seat, just move the camera here. Push the lever down and the seat folds. Really straightforward. Access the under seat storage in the front seats. You lift up from the front like that. It comes up and forwards and then you can grab the back and it just tilts up like that. And you can see in here is also the jack just in case you ever break down and you need to change your tyre. On that note the spare wheel in the VWT 6.1 is under the back and there is a very specific way to remove that. I'm not going to go into it in this video but essentially there's one nut that locks it into position and another one that stays on there even when you're undoing it and you need to read the instructions for that, it is quite tricky. Um, of course you can just phone the AA and they'll come out and do it anyway. I'm not going to go into detail about any of the controls around here or the driving controls and the steering wheel and all that kind of stuff. What I'll do is I'll just put a link in the video just up on the screen here somewhere um, to show you my T6.1 review video where I go into all of this kind of stuff. It's all there already. And over here you've got a couple of USB points and the 12 volt charging socket as well. Power and water in a camper van is really straightforward. You flip up, I mean they're, they're labelled there as you can see, flip up the water, unlock it, undo this, put hose in, fill it up with water, close it down again. Power, again very straightforward. You'll see here there's a little noggin at the bottom, there's only one way up you can put that cable, very straightforward. One bit of advice I'd give you is always make sure you put the dead end, that's the camper van end, in first and then connect it to your live power source. That just means that there's no way you can have an accident. Um, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be able to give yourself a shock with this, but if you always plug the dead end in first, it means you're not wandering about with a live power cable in your hand. If you ever have the uh, need to change the wheels, there's a special little um, ring clip thing on the jack you just hook that into there and these are just caps you pull the cap off and that gets you access to the wheel nuts none of these are locking wheel nuts so they just come off very straightforward i'm going to cover the gas locker in this video what i'm going to do is put a link above to the video where i did look at the gas locker and also how you can tell how much is left in your gas if you need to check it handover video i hope that's been useful for you if you have any questions, leave a comment below or get in touch with me. I'd be delighted to help you. Take care. Thanks for watching.